Hello learners, I am Madhuri Huda from Department of Education, Maharshi Dhan University, Rotar. With the best wishes for today's session, let us enter in our next module on using open educational resources effectively. In this session, we will discuss on the aspects of improving usefulness of open education resources, various challenges in the use of open education resources, some required skills for capacity building in using open education resources, and various types of open education resource users and the ways to find an appropriate open education resource. Learning outcomes of the present module are, learners will be able to improve the usefulness of open education resource, they will be able to explore the challenges in the use of open education resource, they will be able to find out the best ways and skills required for the capacity building in use of open education resource, they will be able to understand various type of open educational resource users. They will be able to find out the appropriate open educational resource. Now, we will discuss about the improving the usefulness of open education resource. See, existing open education resources should be good in terms of access and usability. The swift increase in the number of open education resources and the online repository is driving this need. Search engine should provide the description about the open education resources. It may improve the functioning of the search engines also. There is an imbalance between the availability of open education resource and the knowledge product of the developed countries. A huge number of open education resources are the product of developed countries. The elements of language and culture have invariably invaded in the content of open education resource. Most of the open education resources are in English and influenced by the Western culture. So the usefulness in developing and the underdeveloped countries is limited due to the lack of relevance and the risk consigning. But nowadays, a good number of open education resources are being produced by the developing nations also based on their own languages and the culture. Since the ideology of open education resource is based on its reuse and repurpose, so, they need to be easily searchable across the repository at global level with the possibility of downloading and appropriate adaption according to the local context. Some major challenges in the use of open education resources are, there are a large number of unresolved issues which may be discussed like, first is locating open education resource. Open education resource can be difficult to find. Open education resource researchers undertook a significant amount of technical work on description of educational context and specifications in order to make it easily accessible. Learning resources like Meta Data Initiative LR, LRMI 2011 has been started. Learning objects, metadata and Dublin core fields focus on licensing information and results of education into the scheme.org and the metadata framework which is to be used by Yahoo, Google and Bing. Searching the internet by using both by the license and the results of education makes open education resource easy to find. Some more advanced services like recommender system has also been started to suggest the user some more appropriate open education resource in their own areas. Despite the research results in the area of locating open education resource, locating the right OER, right open education resource has been a challenging task that needs significant additional efforts from the researcher. Second is sustainability issues. It is quite difficult to run any program and continue to fund it on an ongoing basis whose purpose is to give things away from free from the coast. This concern for issue of sustainability is well grounded. Unless the open educational program site is able to first gain and maintain a critical mass of active engaged users and provide substantial and differentiated value to them in its startup and growth phases, then none of the available business model will be likely to benefit the open education resource program in the long run. The researchers need to work on some modules that seem to work at small scale and in limited context. Many other scaling up and result of researchers are awaited that can claim to have sound knowledge in the area of sustaining open education resource initiatives. Next are quality concerns. Open education resource researches generally face two types of quality issues. The first belong to a very common statement of people, did we get what we paid for? Another is related to locating and selecting an open education resource. 
large number of open education resources that is 28,40,000 open education resources in Google can be found at a length. But it becomes quite difficult to identify and select a high quality open education resource. Mechanisms have been devised to rate and assign 1 to 5 stars to open education resource in order to indicate the quality of the open education resource to the future researchers. The quality of the content of an open education resource is a joint venture of the resource and the user in the same manner as item difficulty and the learner capability are related in the item response theory. And the next is problem of localization or recontextualization. Localizing open education resource is least understood but quite important aspect in using open education resource. Sometimes the open education resource need to be adapted before it is used. Localization is recontextualization of resource content for a particular situation in which it is experienced by the learner. The act of modifying an open education resource for cultural, linguistic and readiness requirements increases its usefulness. The possibility of modifying and adapting open education resources may not function up to the mark. Open education resources differ from traditional resources in terms of their permissions and licensing. In this context, we may also discuss the 5R framework proposed by David describes the openness part of OERs, which include first is retain, which is the right to make, own and control the copies of the content created by someone. Next is reuse, which explains the right to use the content in various ways like in a study group, in a video, on a website or in the classroom. Third is revise. It is the right to adapt, adjust, modify or change the content into another language. Next is remix. It is the right to combine the original work or the revised content with other open content to create something else. For example, incorporating the content into a mashup. Next is redistribution. It is the right to share the copies of the original content, revisions of the content or remixing with other content. For example, giving a copy of the content to a friend or to someone else. Now let us discuss some ways and skills which are required for the capacity building in using open education resources. Some key points or skills are required for the institutions for harnessing the open education resource in an effective way, which may be discussed as follows. First is expertise in course material design and development. Second is technological skills and expertise is required. Third is promotion of open education resource and its advocacy is also required. Fourth is skills and expertise for improvement in quality of teaching learning process. Fifth is skills and expertise in network management of the educators and the institutions to work collaboratively and cooperatively for the improvement of teaching learning projects. Sixth is monitoring and evaluation of expertise. Seventh is expertise in sharing and curation of open education resource content. Now let us discuss some more aspects on which capacity building rest. These may be related to the people and institutions. People and institutions require to be enabled in efficient use of open education resources. This may involve the following. First is increasing awareness about the open education resource potential and requirement for its effective use. Next is raising awareness about the key elements for creation of supportive policy regarding development of open education resource content and use of technology. Third is identification of best practices in the use of open education resource so that there are opportunities not only to see and observe effective use of open education resource but also to initiate development to support network for common creation of knowledge. Now let us see. There are many types of open education resource users. Open education resource specifically and open education in general gives a foundation for other general teaching practices to get benefits. But the practitioners and educators from these areas are quite unaware of its use effectively. Analysis of the result of researches on open education resources indicate some common categories of open education resource users. First is open education resource active. OER active. Next is open education resource as facilitator, OER as facilitator. Third is open education resource consumer, OER consumer. 
Let us discuss the first category OER active. These users are aware of the issues related to OER and open education. They have understanding about open, open licenses and advocate and propagate open education resources. Most of the work of the research hub focus on this group and the result of their researches emphasize the positive contribution to the society. This OER active group is continuously expanding but every educator is not keenly interested in OER movement. Next is OER as facilitator. This group of users have awareness of open education resource, open education and licensing policies, yet they follow the pragmatic approach in the use of OER. Their primary concern is their goal related to teaching, research and development of open education resource and their sharing remains at the back seat. Their keen interest is doing innovation in their own area and their use of open education resource is limited to the aspect that open education resource help them in doing that innovation. Example of such users are the teachers or the researchers who uses TED Talks, Khan Academy or other open education resource for their field specific purposes. And the third category is OER consumers. These users generally use open education resource amongst a mixture of other media and are not able to distinguish between the two. Awareness and understanding of licensing is poor and not of concern for them. These users are consumers of open education resource rather than being the creator. For such users, open education resource need to be free. Now, let us discuss some strategy for finding appropriate open education resource. The number and scope of open education resource is expanding every day. New resources are becoming added into this intellectual capital very fast. There is no comprehensive list of available open education resource. In order to search for an appropriate open education resource, the researcher should follow some specific strategies for searching, which may be as follows. First is specialized open education resource search. In this aspect, we should search the specialized OER search engines. The first and foremost important thing to locate OER is to use specific search engines meant for open education resource instead of using Google and Bing. There are many specific search engines also for locality, open education resource. Their listing is selective and based is on different search criteria. So more than one should be seen. Creative Commons search, which may be searched by http search.creativecommons.org, Fox Semantic, www.foxsemantic.com, Open Courseware Consortium, which may, which may also be searched, Global Learning Objects, Brokered Exchange, Globe Alliance, it is also a specific search engine for open education resource. Now, second aspect is suitable OER repository. Suitable OER repository should be located. For searching specific open education resource, the researcher need to access the open education resource repository. Most of the repositories are institution based and some are country based also. It depends on the materials released by the institution or the countries respectively. Popular examples are Mitokau, Massachusetts Institute of Technology Open Courseware Repository. Some of the repositories are subject specific, for example, MedED portal, which is selected to be educational resource of medical field. Some significant open education resource repositories are OpenLearn, which may be searched at http openlearn.open.ac.uk, OCW resource for education, CORE, and some other resource repositories. Open education resource directory site should be used. There are many sites which themselves are not repositories, but have very good quality content stored as a database of websites. Their databases have specific points of focus. For example, Open Education Resource Africa, a quality resource of Africa are highlighted. Some of these are OER Commons, OER Africa, Commonwealth of Learning and Open Education Resource with Others. Once a re education resource is developed and licensing is selected, it needs to be stored in online repository for access to all. These developed education resources may rest in one of the following options. First is selection of an open repository. There are a good number of repositories which accepts contributions from multiple and varied locations. 
the person submitting the resource need to register and log in before uploading the educational resource these repositories require information related to the educational resource also in order to get in catalog and for its categorization it is required in order to make it easily accessible after uploading the vetting process will be followed to ensure the quality of the education resource before its addition to the repository for example jorum and it also welcomes the educational resource that supports british curriculum at higher education level next is oer commons it also allow users to contribute to its knowledge pool and the second option for uploading the oer is using institutional repository many higher education institutions specifically universities are setting up their own institutions of education repositories and store their own collection of education resources if an author works for such an institution he or she is supposed to submit his or her education resource under the auspices of that particular institution third is building of open education resource online open education resources can be developed and built online some sites within their own specific online environment support such building of education resource then these sites take over the process including obtaining creative commons license and further adding to the database of open education resource here in this case the users open their account develop the education material online and get it published for example wiki educator which uses a similar method to welcome the content developer to develop teaching materials collaboratively second is connections which support teams to develop modules for learning third is exploitation of social networks publishing open education resource online can be done with social networking sites also for example youtube it allows digital video material for online open education resource publication and one may be the flickr here photographic material can be published with creative commons using open education resource for our own purpose or adaptation of open education resource in most of the situations the users have enough freedom to adapt open education resource in accordance with his language or cultural context where the license allows it in case the license restricts the adaptation under creative common licensing with no derivatives the users may not alter it anyways it has to be used as such some popular methods and ways in which open education resource can be modified are mentioned below first is adaptation multiple adaptations are developed to suit the needs of multiple context with a single open education resource the language may be translated to other language or addition of area specific or local to make it culturally suitable and relevant to students for a specific context next is mixing some open education resources are assembled and mixed together and additional content is added to create a totally different education resource this process is done when the concern is that it becomes very rare to get existing open education resource that suits to the needs next is asset extraction some specific assets of an education resource is selected and extracted and using it in an entirely different context this is generally used for media elements such as graphs and photographs now here are some oer services which we may discuss now first is open courseware open oer repositories next is open courseware initiatives by the universities next is content creation initiatives fourth is subject specific open courseware oer fifth is open schooling initiatives and sixth is open courseware oer now let us sum up what we have discussed yet existing open education resources should be good in terms of access and usability the swift increase in the number of open education resources and the online repository is driving this need search engine should provide the description about the open education resource and some challenges are there in proper use of open education resources like locating an appropriate open education resource quality concern of open education resources sustainability issues and issue of recontextualization we discuss some skills for capacity building in using open education resource types of open education resource users and strategy for finding appropriate open education resource and the ways to share open education resources with others i hope you all have enjoyed this learning session of the module thanks